Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Today we are making a plane adjustment mallet. Yes, reed tools. Ooh. Today we're working with torrified curly maple. This is a lot of fun to work with. It is much like regular maple, other than it's a little more fractious to work with. Uh, this is a scrap piece from a couple of their projects, and I have a bunch of this little stuff that I like working with. I'm going to be ripping it down to something that's about an inch and a half by three quarters inch, and that will become the handle for it. For the head, we're gonna be using a Reed Plains blank head. This is in a small London plat pattern style. Uh, he supplies them in three different sizes, one for London pattern, regular with a wooden face, uh, one with the small London pattern, as well as a large Japanese style, uh, so you can make the one you want. I'm going to try and do something really kind of different with this one. I, I have done many other um, plane setting mallet handles, and on this one I want to experiment and try something a little bit different. So the nice thing about a plane setting handle is it's very, very small and delicate. Um, plane setting hammers are very, very small. And so I want to make a bulb at the end and then taper everything else down. So I started by cutting in with a rasp to get it close to the thickness I want for the main shaft. And then from that rasp mark, I pull it back and trim down the handle. I'm going to round over and make the handle smooth, except for the bulb. We're just going to take this down to a shape that is relatively pleasing, and uh, then we can get it close to uh, what we want. For the bulb at the end, I want to make this octagonal. I love the feel of an octagonal surface, and I've tried this on a bunch of things, and the more I do it, the more I love it. For the actual mounting of the hammer head, uh, we need to put this down. You can see the hole in the hammer head is a lot smaller. So I'm going to put that on top and then use a lead to go in and mark out where it is. You run that around and you get a nice dot on there. To cut it down, I'm going to cut a shoulder that gets close to that depth, and then I'm going to come in and chisel it out. I'm staying away from the line because you can see that one is cutting back towards the line, and this one's cutting away from it. So you can learn which direction it is going. And then I'm going to come in with a rasp and smooth it out and get it close to that line. I'm not going to take it right to it. I'm going to stay a little ways away from it and make sure that the head can fit on. I'm going to slide on a little ways and see where it's rubbing. If it slides on to a certain point, sometimes I'll mark the bottom of the head, and I know you don't touch anything above that because that is where it should be. Also, these heads are cast uh, with the top being flared slightly, so when you put a wedge in it, it actually has a bit of a, a, a key wedging in there. I'm going to chamfer the top corner of it so that it chamfers right down to the edge, and that just gives it a nice looking shoulder. I realized oh, I'm going to probably be nicking this a little bit more, so let's put some protective tape on there. Don't know if that really is going to do that much, but three or four layers is better than nothing. But we can come in with the chisel, chamfer that out, and then I thought, you know what, I don't want this to be a smooth chamfer, I want it to be a concave in shape. And I really like how that came out, just bringing a file in on that. Now we can do the final smoothing. Uh, the, the, the spoke shaves left it with a, a faceted surface, and I want to take out most of that with a file. Then I come in with the sandpaper and the bow sander, and this lets me feel it. And the sandpaper gets it really close to it and shows any imperfections. The last thing that's going to touch it is the file, but the sandpaper gets it really close. Making this transition uh, even and clean all the way around was a little more tricky than I thought, but I, I really like how it came out, just using the rounded surface of the file, making it fit all the way around. The bulb on the end was a little bit uh, too big, so we're going to shorten that up. And honestly, this whole thing, I'm just going by look. What, what looks good to me? What is pleasing to my eye? And that's really all you need here. You don't need anything that's precise unless you're following some historical example. And I'm not. Um, I've done historical examples in the past, and this one is just uh, this one's just for fun. If you want to see those, I actually have several videos of doing other plane setting handles, and so I actually go into a couple different designs and styles and, and methods on those. This one will be my personal one. Um, I haven't made one with the reed kit for myself, and so I thought, let's do this. Now, for the wedge, I'm going to grab a little piece here and just split it off. Uh, I'm just getting something with a nice clean grain. This is a piece of maple, and I can split it against that and shave it down with a chisel. Uh, it's a very simple little step to make, and it's a lot of fun. Putting a dab of glue in there gets the wedge ready, and then we can start pounding this down in. The top of the head is angled so that this will spread out and fill the gap, and that way the handle head, uh, the handle is actually fatter at the top. And the trick to this is you want to be very, very slow. Do not bash this in. Do not hit it hard. 
just work it in very slowly, little bit by little bit, and you'll be able to get it down to the depth you want. We're going to cut it off. I like to leave a little bit extra. I don't want it to be perfectly flush. And then I realized, wait a second, I was going to smooth this out a little bit. I probably should have done that beforehand. I like to leave the cast look on it, but then polish up a couple of the surfaces. So you come in with a file and clean them up and then hit them with a bit of 400 grit sandpaper. It's amazing how good they look. Uh, putting a small chamfer on the catching end uh, just makes it a little bit cleaner, and I like the look of that. And then now for the boiled linseed oil, and this torrified curly maple is, oh, yes. Uh, the chateauiancy on this is oh, <laughs> happiness. Um, I really love this torrified curly maple. It just pops with this. With the boiled linseed oil, you want to let it soak up as much as it can, and I put on several coats, just one after another, in the course of 15, 20 minutes until it stops soaking it up. Then we can come in and wipe off the excess with a rag. Then I'm going to put on some paste wax. This is a soft wax that I sell, and I work it into the surface, and I'm just going to polish this into every bit I can. Sometimes I use steel wool. Sometimes I use others. I'm going to let that sit for 30 minutes or so and then come back with a rag or an old sock and polish it. And this just rubs everything down, and the feel you get after that with the wax on it is absolutely beautiful. And if you want to know what a plane setting mallet is, I have several videos on how to adjust a wooden plane. It is a tool you use, and I really like how this one came out. Looking forward to using it for a long time to come. There you have it. I am in love with this. The, the torrified curly maple is just gorgeous. This is what is called a London pattern head. Now, traditionally, London pattern would have a very specific handle shape to it, um, but I wanted to do something like this. I really like having the octagonal shape on here. Um, so I, I, I actually thought I had made one for myself a long time ago, but I made several of them that were then given away uh, when they first came out. We announced the reed heads. Um, so I forgot I got this one out of stock, but I didn't actually make it for myself. So there, plane adjustment mallet. Yeah, if you don't know what a plane adjustment mallet is, I have a couple videos on what they are, how to use them. I don't use them that much because I don't have many wooden planes, but when I do get into my molding planes and things like that, they are invaluable. And I've wanted to make this particular one because I love the, the shape and design on it. So, haha, <laughs> happiness. Uh, if you want to get one of these, I'll leave a link down below where you can get the head and make your own. Jeff offers them in three different sizes. This is the small London pattern. The large London pattern is much larger and you can get the Japanese style and uh, have your fun with your own plane adjustment mallet. <laughs> so I hope you like this. If you have any other thoughts, ideas, things I could have done differently, things you'd like to see me try, let me know that down in the questions and comments down below. I do read through all of those and I answer as many of them as I can. So thank you for that. It does help out the channel. Anytime you put a comment down below, that helps us get in front of more people, helps the channel grow and means a lot. If you would like to take it even further, all of these people over here, they are all patrons on Patreon. And without patrons or members here on the channel, we wouldn't exist. We are sponsored by you guys. So if you want to help us out and keep the channel going, think about becoming a patron or a member. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. So a few weeks ago, I was flying home from Atlanta and realized I was on the wrong airplane. But thankfully, I brought this, so I took it out and whack! And I adjusted the airplane. So we went to the right place.